praise the lord blessed be the name of jesus today we want to take this part of the scripture we read here and uh, we'll speak under the title we are more than conquerors there is something really important for believers when we study this part of the scriptures and when we learn what the lord has done for us we have been studying this chapter 8 and this is the last part last time we were speaking that nobody shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ. But today, we are speaking in this important aspect of Christian life, our position. We are more than conquerors. When we speak about this, we are more than conquerors, there is always a question mark. What does it mean to be more than a conqueror? Because we know that uh, a person who is a conqueror is someone who may lead a conquest, but to be more than a conqueror, it means goes beyond that ability or capacity. It is the same when we speak about winner. Whenever there is a competition, and especially in sports, there will always be a winner, just a winner. That is the only thing that you can say, a winner. But how could we say that someone is more than a winner? How can we say that we are more than conquerors? It is speaking about the power of the Lord Jesus Christ working in the believer. When someone is in a competition, but that someone has always defeated all his enemies or his competitors, and nobody is even near to reach him in his capacity, then People complain, and they say, it is not fair. It's not fair because this person is off. It's more. It's above. So nobody has a single chance to win. And that is exactly what the Lord is saying here concerning believers concerning church not because of our own capacities abilities or our own authority or power but because the word of god says greater is him that is in us than him that is in the world. The Lord Jesus Christ is more than a conqueror. The devil will never be a match for the Lord Jesus. The devil will never be a match for the Father. The devil will never be a match for the Holy Ghost. Never. And now, what the Lord says right here is, when 
the Lord Jesus explaining to the disciples about their position in Jesus. The Lord said, the one who loved me, he will keep my commandments. And my father will love him. And I will love him. And we will come and make our dwelling with him. So what the Lord is saying, and that is written right there in the uh, Gospel of John. When the Lord says, when someone loves me and keeps my word, my commandments, my father will love him, I will love him. Then we'll come together and make our dwelling with him means that our God is living in the life of that believer. Praise God. The Lord Jesus referring to the same in the same book of John in chapter 7. He said, the ones who believe in me out of their belly, of the innermost part, the inner man. He says, out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. And it says... That the Lord Jesus was referring to the Holy Spirit that will dwell in the believers. So it means there is something inside the believer that is not compared to anything down here on earth. There is a special position given by God. Our God Himself is dwelling. In the believer, the Apostle Paul said, I don't live myself, but Jesus lives in me. So in other words, once we gave place to our God and to the Lord Jesus to live inside, in our spirit, in our inner mind, then our position changes. When you study this chapter, you will see that the previous verses speak about the different things that could attack a believer, trying to stop him from his love to the Lord Jesus Christ and to his, from his love to the Father. It says in the previous verses, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And then... It calls some human things that could stop, that could stop. It says, shall tribulation. Then it goes on and says, distress. Or maybe persecution. Or famine. Or perhaps nakedness, or more of a peril or sore. Those are things which people really fear in life. Speaking about nakedness, peril, famine, speaking about uh, tribulation, speaking about sore. Speaking about distress, these things human beings fear. They don't want to be like that. But then it goes on and says, in all these things we are more than conquerors. In all these things. Which things? The things that we already called upon. In everything, we are more than conquerors. And then it goes on, and in verse 38, it says, For I am persuaded. In other words, I am fully convinced. Totally clear for me. Fully convinced. Persuaded. That... 
neither death nor life. So the opposite, death nor life. Death is something that makes you afraid. Life will make you glad. We have an instinct inside ourselves. We want to live. God made us in that way, that we wish, we long for life. Normally, if you are sick, you don't want to, to let that sickness destroy your body. You want to live. If you are about to cross a street and you see a car coming, you either stop and don't cross yet, or if you are in the midst of the road, you will jump. But anyway, you want to live. You don't want to die. But the word of God says here, death, no life. And then you go on and speaks about angels and principalities, powers. Speaking about all the wrong forces, the devilish forces, powers, principalities. Or is speaking about angels as well. Maybe something that is impressing you good. But then it goes on and says, things present nor things to come. So when you examine all these things that we are calling upon in this part, and the Lord is speaking about right there, those are things which are supernatural. You cannot control by your own power these things. You cannot control death by your own power. You cannot control life. Life is given just by God. Up to now, scientists... They have examined everything, but they never produced a single life. They can imitate, they can do this, they can do that. They can even take something from inside a woman and a man and put it together and make it appear outside. But they must go to the source, to the fountain of life, because you cannot control life. You cannot create life. Speaking about angels, that you could refer to good heavenly creatures, but speaking about principalities and powers, speaking about devilish creatures, you cannot control these things either. By your own power, you cannot control any of these things. Then it goes on and says, things in the present or things to come or future things, you cannot control anything because you know that all the happenings of this life, you cannot control. But what the Lord is saying right here is something different because in verse 39 it says height or depth but it says not any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord it is not because of you but because the Lord Jesus Christ in you. It is, not, it is not because of your power. It is because of the power of the Lord manifested in you. It is not because of yourself. It is because God the Father 
on the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ, they came to dwell in you. So that is why the Lord says right here, he's speaking to us and he says, nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ. But moreover, it says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. You take the case of the many examples in the Bible. There is this man of God right there, Job. All his struggles, his trials, his tribulations. He couldn't control anything. And the devil was fighting against this man of God. Trying to make him curse God trying to destroy his faith the devil was doing his best to destroy Job's hope in the Lord he was right there even saying that Job was serving God because of the many material blessings because of the human things that he was enjoying. Because he was a rich man. Because the Lord had given him his protection. Then the devil was saying, that is the only reason why Job is serving God. And in, even he came before the Lord then said, if you take everything from him, I want to see him. He will curse you in your own face, in your own presence. And uh, all the things that happened to this man, not only his wealth, but also his sons, daughters, Everything was taken from him. And now it looks like if this man could faint, could dismay, he is now so sick, the word of God says, that he said, I escaped just with the skin of my teeth. In other words, he's about to disappear physically. Almost everything gone, and suddenly this man of God says, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that my Redeemer lives. He will raise me up from the dust. That is not the only example. But the word of God will show you people like Jeremiah as well. He was pressed by his friends. Because he was preaching the word of God. And he said, I will not speak anymore in the name of the Lord. I will not preach anymore. Because whenever I speak... My only message is violence, destruction coming. And all my friends, my acquaintances, everybody is against me. But suddenly he said, wow, but there is a fire inside myself. I feel a fire in my bones. I want to shut up. I want to keep quiet, but I can't. I will have to open my mouth again and speak the word of the Lord. And then he went on and said, because my God is with me as a mighty giant. So suddenly he felt that from being a small, small, small creature that was praised by his friends, now suddenly 
he understands his God is in him and his God is a mighty giant. And suddenly he feels that everything I can do through Jesus who strengtheneth me. That is exactly what the word of God says right here. More than a conqueror means our God will never let you fail. Whatever the circumstances are, whatever the situation is, whatever the problems, even if you feel you cannot make it anymore, even if you're lying on the ground, you are flat on the ground, even if you are in tears, even if you feel yourself desperate, suddenly the word of God says, the enemy shall come like rivers, but the spirit of the Lord will rise a banner against him. More than a conqueror. Nothing, not even things of this human life, not even things from the spiritual realm, not present, not future, nothing says the word of God right here shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. But in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Are you with me? Do you understand your position? Because if the Lord tarries, and next time we'll have the opportunity to speak the word of God again, then we'll switch in the word of God to chapter 9, and then we'll speak about something different. Because this chapter 8 is speaking about the believer's position. Now in chapter 9, we'll speak about what the Lord has done, the people of Israel, how it was the blessing of God, for the church, but now we are discussing about the believer's position. The believer's authority. Now we are discussing what the Lord has made of you. Because one thing is what the Lord has made for you, and another thing is what the Lord has made out of you. Because if you go, and I will just close with this, if you go to the book of Genesis chapter 12, when the Lord God called Abraham, you will see what the Lord says right there. He says, I will bless you. But then he says, I will make you a blessing. So I will bless you means the blessing that I will pour on you but I will make you a blessing means your own nature you yourself will be a blessing it's totally different I will tell it again something is that the Lord will bless you so he will pour this blessing upon you. And another thing is the Lord will take you, you yourself, and he will make you a blessing. It's totally different. You will be changed in a blessing. That is why the word of God says, the ones who are in Jesus, they are new creatures. Totally different. All things are passed away. Behold, everything has become new. So today, our position, remember, we are more than conquerors. Our position in the Lord. I say again, we are more than conquerors. That is our position in the Lord. The Lord made you more than a conqueror. It is not you. It is not your human nature. It is the Lord who made you more than a conqueror. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who came to dwell, to live in you. It is the Holy Spirit who came to live inside yourself. So it is not 
your human power, not your human ability, not your human skills, but it is God himself living in you. And then you become more than a conqueror. Even if someday you are, listen to me, someday maybe you are in tears. Oh, cannot make it. Whatever the position is, even if you are lying flat on the ground, oh, still you are more than a conqueror. The Holy Ghost will take over in you. The same power that God the Father worked in Jesus Christ when he resurrected him from the dead is the same power, says the word of God in the book of Ephesians, that is working in you. Power enough even to resurrect you. You understand me? Power enough even to resurrect you from your condition, from your situation, from whatever. Today, it is a wonderful opportunity for us to confess before the Lord our faith, to confess that He is real, and to confess that what He has done for us is truth. Would you like to stand and pray together with me?